You're all here on 44 Treetop Lane. Oh, that's Chris. Chris, you have to. Um... I unmuted. I unmuted. Oh, I think you have to. I have to move. Sorry. So is Chrissy taking over the Zoom now? She's taking over the, the, the strange Zoom function. I'm going to shut mine off then because I've got 25%. Oh, I am muted. I'm leaving. <laughs> All right, you're still there then? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> okay, 44 Tree Tap Lane. This was um, an application to have six foot fence in the front yard um, it, it extends currently it extends past the property line um, it, they, they can't do that um, so I don't have any problem with it going to the property line uh, but it, it has to conform to that anybody else have any concerns I, I agree I think that will take care of all of the line of sight issues and well just something I just want to make a comment here <laughs> about the height of this thing. Uh, if, if you take a, I mean, what the concept is, is uh, as I understand it, is not to have anything over 42 inches before the front edge of your, of your house or your building, right? And it's very clear to me that the existing fence before they added the three panels <laughs> exceeded 42 inches before they even got to that point. Uh, and the other point, as I said earlier, is Aside from it extending outward past the town line, it, it, it is a sight line problem, and, it, and it's, uh, you know, I, I view it as a traffic hazard. So, uh, you know, I don't know how people feel about, uh, you know, 72 inches versus 42 inches, but, uh, you know, those are a couple things worth thinking about. Well, on the pictures where it shows the property line, yep. if the fence comes back to that or mm -hmm. further, oh, Further from the into the property, that would take care of the sight line problem. Yeah, it would take care of the sight line. Yeah. yeah, I mean they can't they can't have the fence past the property line. Right. right. So the question really is whether they can have it in the front yard at all. And most of the fence has been there. Yeah. So this well, is just an example. Most of it is, but <laughs> but again, you know, I mean it's. So I'm not I'm not clear. Well, what I, my point was that. Do you think that the regular three and a half feet is sufficient? Well, I would think it would be uh, uh, for the area before the before the, the house itself, right? I mean, if you uh, I didn't take any pictures, but I mean, I took a look at the at, at the height that the fence was re in relationship to the to the building, and clearly they had gone past the front end of the, the front end of the building with a with a six foot high fence. Uh, Okay. Yeah, some years ago, like, like yeah, some years, years ago, ago, right? Yeah. Which I, you know, whatever. We don't necessarily care, but uh, I'm not saying like undo that, but it, but maybe maybe for whatever is left for that section in front, maybe it ought to be 42 inches instead of 72 inches. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Um, part, the applicant, I think, wanted to use it as screening mm -hmm. from the vehicle that's parked there. Yeah. You think so? Three and a half feet would would satisfy that? Well, I, you know, I don't think this is worth falling on a sword over if they, if they really want six feet, but uh, it, it's a little, <laughs> you know, a little incongruous, that's all I'm saying. Okay. Tony? I think the six feet accomplishes both what the parties are looking to do, so I support the six feet. But again, I agree with the panel going back to where the mm -hmm. property line is, yeah, and that, yeah. that increases the sight line. Just the feet. panel, or are you going to make them cut into the other panel? They can... I would grant it to the property line, okay. and they can decide mm -hmm. how they how they want to whether they want to take all panel or mm -hmm. or section it. Mm -hmm. But I think that I think that I don't think that I think once the at the property line, there's not going to be a site issue. So, and that goes to you know as far as the the neighbor's truck gets parked. Phyllis, uh, any concerns? No, look, we're going to bring it back to the property line. And well, we're going to we're going to grant it, and with the acknowledgement that they can't have it past the property line. That's perfect. So it's a panel plus whatever those, that foot is, or whatever. Whatever. Reduction. I mean, they can okay. they can they just can't if it gets grant if everyone agrees that it gets granted, it just it okay. cannot go past no further than the property than that state. Okay. Right, state. and they can decide okay. whether they want a whole panel or a portion of a portion of the panel or okay. whatever. Okay, good with that. Same. Is that everyone's good with that? Yes. 
All right, then <clears throat> we offer these findings. Uh, whether an undesirable change will produce in the character of the neighborhood or a detriment to nearby properties will be created by the granting of the variance. Um, at, since the majority of the fence has existed there for quite some time, um, and the alteration to the change in the fence um, alleviates any of the problems, it is consistent with uh, other fences in the area and uh, it will not have a detriment to nearby properties. Whether the benefits sought by the applicant can be achieved by some method feasible for the applicant to pursue other than the area variance based upon the current zoning law and um, uh, the desires of the applicant, uh, the area variance is their only method to get to what they desire. Whether the area, requested area variance is substantial uh, mathematically because their six foot fences are prohibited in a front yard, but uh, based upon the existence of the, of the fence that's already there, um, it's it's kind of minimal and whether the proposed variance will have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood or district there's no evidence that will have any physical or environmental impact whether the alleged difficulty is self-created it certainly was but that's not a reason to deny the variance and I would offer those um, findings okay. Christine do you make, mind making this motion sure. uh, I move that the board approve the request for an area variance set forth in item number two this decision is based on a review of the application, testimony of the applicant, testimony offered in the public hearing, and results of site visits by board members. In approving this variance, the board adopts the findings as set forth by the chair. Second. And conditions. And con um, it's oh. not technically a condition because it's illegal to have something on someone else's property, right. but Providing I think it's good to have it in the resolution that sure. it, it's conditioned upon bringing the fence back to the property line. Bringing the fence back to the property line. I'm on. Okay, I'll I'm second that. Okay. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Then that motion carries. Um, is there anybody else? There's nobody else that stayed on the Zoom. I checked close the Zoom, so is there anyone else on the Zoom waiting? Michael Berta. All right. Which one? He was uh, Diaz, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I, I recuse myself on that one. Okay. Christine. So that was um, number three. item number three. Is there any further discussion from the board about this? They just want to, um, they're looking for the eight and a half foot variance to attach the garage and the house. Okay, is everything, everybody okay with that? Yeah. Okay, I didn't hear you, sorry. All right, so these are the findings. Whether an undesirable change will be produced in the character of the neighborhood or a detriment to nearby properties will be created uh, by granting the variance. Uh, this is consistent with similarly uh, situated properties in the neighborhood. Uh, number two, whether the benefits sought by the applicant can be achieved by some method feasible for the applicant to pursue other than an area variance. Um, based upon the topography of the lot and the existing layout, there's no way to achieve um, this benefit without variances. Number three, whether the requested area variance is substantial. Uh, mathematically, it's significant, but it's in conformity with uh, the neighboring properties and lot layout. Number four, whether the proposed variance will have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions of the neighborhood or district. Um, there's no evidence of physical or environmental impact. And number five, whether the alleged difficult, difficulty was self-created, which consideration shall be relevant to the decision of the Board of Appeals, but shall not necessarily preclude the granting of the area variance. And it's self-created, yes it is, but it's not a reason to deny. So those are the findings. Um, would you like to make the motion? No. Thank you. For item three, are you saying? Item three, yeah. <clears throat> I move that the board I move that the board approve the request for an area variance set forth in item three. This decision is based on a review of the application, testimony of the applicant, testimony offered in the public hearing, and results of site visits by board members. 
In approving this variance, the board adopts the findings set forth by the chair. Second. Second. Vice chair. Acting chair. Who seconded? Her. Okay, all those in favor, signify by aye. 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 Opposed? And there's one recusal. Thank you. All right, that brings us to item number one. Uh, 13, 13 dog, East Dogwood. Um, this is this is legalizing an, an existing situation. Anybody have any concerns about this one? Okay. Yeah. I, unfortunately, I can't control the volume right now, so I'm going to go and see if they can do that in the back. Then let me offer uh, these findings, whether an undesirable change would produce in the character of the neighborhood. Uh, this situation has existed for many, many years uh, and is consistent with the neighborhood. Whether the benefits sought by the applicant can be achieved by some method of it, um, without an area of variance that uh, he would have to destroy the, the building. And whether it's substantial, it is mathematically, but because this situation has existed for so many years, um, it, it's, uh, it's very minimal. Whether the proposed variance will have an adverse effect on or impact on the physical or environmental conditions, there's no evidence of any physical or environmental impact. And whether the alleged uh, difficulty was self-created, it was, but that's not a reason to deny uh, the application, and I offer those findings. Uh, Phyllis, do you mind making no, a motion? I'd be happy to do that. Um, Thank you. I move that the board approve the request for an area variance set forth in item number one. This decision is based on a review of the application, testimony of the applicant, testimony offered in the public hearing, and the results of site visits by board members. In approving this variance, the board adopts the findings as set forth by the chair. Second. All right, any, any discussion? All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Then that motion carries. All right, that brings us to item number four, uh, 61 Park Avenue. Any concerns with this one? Okay, then let me offer these findings. Whether an undesirable change would produce in the character of the neighborhood or a detriment to nearby properties will be created by the granting of the variance. This um, is consistent with other properties in the neighborhood and will have no impact. Whether the benefits sought by the applicant can be achieved by some method feasible for the applicant to pursue other than area variance based upon the location of the building and the size of the lot, uh, an area variance is necessary to, in order to achieve uh, the result. Whether the requested area variance is substantial, um, it, um, it's not mathematically substantial in the fact that uh, it has, it's not encroaching any more into the side lot line. Uh, it has really no impact and whether the proposed variance will have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions. <clears throat> There's no evidence of any physical or environmental impact. And while this was uh, self-created, that's not a reason to deny the application, and I, I would offer those findings. Second. Do you mind making a motion? Number four, right? Number four, right? It's four, correct. I approve, um, I move that the board approve the request for the area variance set forth in item number nine. Of item number four. Uh, this decision is based on a review of the application, testimony of the applicant, testimony offered in public hearing, and results of site visits by board members. In approving this variance, the board adopts the findings set forth by the chair. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Then that motion carries. That brings us to item number five, 20 Colburn Drive. <clears throat> this is an application for area variance for uh, a new addition uh, requiring a 4.7 foot uh, variance. Any concerns about this one? Now, again, um, this was, it really has no impact. It's within the, uh, the footprint of the house for the side lot lines. And really it's just the back part that's increased. And so let me offer these findings, whether an undesirable change will reduce in the character of the neighborhood or detriment to nearby properties will be created by the granting of the variance. Um, this uh, application is consistent with other properties in the neighborhood and will have no impact on <coughs> the neighborhood. 
for a character. And whether the benefits sought by the applicant can be achieved by some method feasible for the applicant to pursue based upon the existing structure and its location on the lot, uh, an area of variance would be required in order to obtain uh, the desired result. Whether the requested area of variance is substantial um, based upon the fact that um, it has no further encroachment into the side lot line, um, it, it's not substantial. And whether it will have an adverse effect or impact, uh, there's no evidence of any physical or environmental impact in the neighborhood or district. And while this was self-created, that is not a reason to deny the application. And I would offer those findings. And so, uh, Tony, yes, do you mind making? Okay, sure. Uh, I move that the board approve uh, their answer requested. And item number five, uh, the decision is based on a review of the application, testimony of the applicant, testimony offered in the public hearing, and res results of site visits by board members. And in approving this variance, the board adopts the findings set forth by the chair. So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor signify aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Then that motion carries. All right, that, that brings us to 20 Oakwood Drive, a special use permit. Um, in, in order to be eligible for a special use permit, certain criteria have to be met. And based upon the testimony of the applicant and the neighbors, um, it, it does not meet the criteria necessary to to grant a special use permit. Does, does anybody, I mean, does anybody disagree with that? <clears throat> In that case, do I have to, well, so if I just make a motion to deny the special use permit because it does not meet the criteria, is that sufficient? Yes. Then I make a motion uh, regarding item number tw uh, six that it does, the, based upon the testimony of the applicant and um, neighbors and the record, site visits and other inspections, that um, the application does not meet the criteria to issue a special use permit, and therefore I move to deny the request. Second. All right, any discussion? All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Then that motion is carried to deny the application for a special use permit. <clears throat> and number seven was adjourned. And so that brings us to number eight. Uh, there's a request by the planning board to be lead agency on the Vassar College Admission Building, 124 Raymond Avenue, construction of a new administration and career education building, walkways, landscaping, lighting, new college entrance at the intersection of College View Avenue and Fairmont Avenue. And remove nine to 13 tennis courts and revisions to surrounding parking in a project area plus or minus 7.32 acres. Anybody have any concern about the planning board being lead agency? Oh. My, my only concern is that originally I watched the planning board meetings regarding the construction of the new um, in an institute? The institute. And that originally that was supposed to be pushed farther back allowing for more green space that was where the um, farmer's market was. And so it just grew out of, out of and grew, that's what I would say. So my concern is that while I've seen the original plans for this site, I'm concerned that it too will just grow and grow and not fit the neighborhood. So the, the purpose of the, as I understand, the purpose of lead agency is for uh, investigation into the environmental in impacts of the project and, and not for final approval of, which would be done by planning anyway. Is that, is that accurate? Yes. Okay. So we're not involved at all again? There may or may not be variances. I don't know of any that have been identified at this time for, the, for this project. So then if there's not, you will not see it. So in the, the alternative, of course, is that either another board would have, would have to do the investigations into the environmental impact. Um, and I, I don't know that. Uh, well, we've never done one on, on major projects. So typically, the planning board is, is part of their purview. But I, I understand your comments, but it, it doesn't have anything to do with lead agency, as, as I see it. That, is, that, is that accurate? 
Right. I mean, the only thing that this board can decide based on the motion that's before you tonight is whether you want to take on, whether you want to consent to the planning board doing the environmental analysis for this project or not. And there, the planning board has stated that they, they want to do, they want to be the lead on the environmental analysis. So um, other comments, if you have them on the project, could be directed to the planning board mm -hmm. or, you know, made at a public hearing if you wanted to. In that case, I move to uh, the planning board be lead agency on the Vassar College admissions building project. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Opposed. Okay. <laughs> All right. And then I'll, I'll move to adjourn. Second. All right. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Then that motion carries. Thank you very much.